Ladies and gentlemen, online viewers from around the world, thank you for joining the Taiwan Business and Trade Show webinar, Water Resources and Circular Economy. This webinar is organized by the Taiwan External Trade Development Council, TITRA, and sponsored by the Bureau of Foreign Trade, Taiwan. In today's webinar, renowned speakers and industrial analysts will share their insights on the latest trends in sustainable supply chain and water resource management, and how they fit into the bigger picture of the world's circular economy movement. We will also introduce two of Taiwan's flagship trade shows that are dedicated to promoting circular economy and sustainable resource management. The Taiwan International Water Week and Asia Sustainable Supply and Circular Economy Conference and Exhibition. In the face of climate change, many manufacturing industries and people's livelihoods have an increasing demand for water resources, despite the reoccurring water shortages in recent years. The ability to manage water resources while minimizing waste has become a key challenge for industries and countries worldwide. What smart solutions are available in Taiwan for optimizing water production, management, and recovery? What are the latest industry trends and technologies in industrial wastewater treatment and reclamation here in Taiwan? Dr. Daniel Tai, Senior Engineer at the Material and Chemical Research Laboratories, Industrial Technology Research Institute, will now give a presentation on the challenges and opportunities in Taiwan's water and circular economy. Dear audience, my name is Daniel Tai, a member of Industrial Technology Research Institute. Today, I will be sharing with you on the challenges and opportunities in Taiwan's water and circular economy. Taiwan is supposed to be one of the rainiest places in the world. Typhoons are common in summer and autumn, and we also got monsoons. According to FAO United Nations research, Taiwan's average annual rainfall is about 2.5 times the global average. However, the share of rainwater per capita is only one-fifth of the world average due to high population density. Taiwan's water supply is facing a serious threat from the climate change too. Over the years, the highest 10% rainfall intensity increased by 140% and the least 10% decreased by 70%. Rainfall patterns are highly irregular. It pours when there is a typhoon or there is a drought if the amount of precipitation is less than expected. Moreover, rainfall is hard to keep in Taiwan due to steep topography and the short distance from the mountain to the ocean. Also, high water consumption and the future demand in petrochemical and electronics industry is inevitable. These two sectors are biggest contributor to our overall economy, but it also uses up half of our industrial water supply. This slide shows seven critical regions they are having water stress problems. Three areas where Science Park are located comprise over 60% of island's water shortage. Something unusual happened last year. No typhoon hit our island. This has resulted in the most serious drought in 56 years. At Baosan number two reservoir in Xinzhu County, one of the primary water sources for Taiwan's 100 billion semiconductor industry located in Xinzhu Science Park. The water level is at all time low with only 7% left. If the reservoirs dry up, it will be a global electronic disaster because around 90% of the most advanced microchips, their power cars, phones, and computers are manufactured in Taiwan. In order to tackle the water shortage during the drought, Taiwan's government dispatched a total of 66 mobile water and wastewater treatment units, including 24 UFRO units at municipal and industrial wastewater treatment plant, 16 Q water purification units in the cities, and 26 emergency seawater desalination units in a span of six weeks. 
UFRO Mobile Wastewater Treatment Unit produce industrial water supply, whereas Q Water and Sea Water Desalination Units produce drinking water supply. A total of 15,000 tons of industrial water and 26,000 tons of drinking water were generated by these mobile units during the drought. How can WIA put together so many emergency mobile units in so many tenders across the island in such a short period of time? This is a tribute to the long-time effort of our water industry on the development of membrane material, filtration modules, and system integration. This line shows the water usage at three science parks. Two interesting trends can be observed. After the COVID-19 outbreak, the water intake increased by 10% due to massive demand on electronic products. But the water usage dropped considerably during the drought. Even with the 15% water cutback and voluntary water saving measures, high-tech industry was able to maintain strong production due to long-time practice of wastewater recovery rate requirement in science parks. After 1999, all wastewater treatment and reclamation at science parks had to reach 85% process water recovery rate and 70% plant water recovery rate. AU Optronics, a major flat panel maker, had managed to achieve zero liquid discharge in 2016. In 2024, TSMC at Southern Taiwan Science Park will be using high-quality reclaimed water produced by its own wastewater reclamation plant to feed the manufacturing line in three nanometer fabrication plants. Due to lack of water source, the water reclamation plant received its feed water from the joint wastewater treatment plant of STSP, which made the reclamation process extremely difficult and complicated. At TSMC, it's well known for its high process water recovery rate, and every drop of water is used for 3.5 times. Its water consumption per unit product is only one third of US average and half of Japan average. This heavy water user like AUO and TSMC not only are experts in wastewater treatment and reclamation, a lot of their vendors and service providers are also top EPC companies or engineering firms in the water industry of Taiwan. Taiwan also sets an ambitious goal to reach 1.32 million tons of reclaimed water supply per day by 2031. Most of this water will be coming from effluent reclamation of municipal wastewater treatment plants. Eight municipal wastewater reclamation plants mostly located in water-critical areas, where it contribute 0.23 million CMD of reclaimed water supply by 2024. Taiwan's water and circular industry is well developed due to strong demands from its electronics and high-tech industry. This slide shows solutions we provide for water and circular technology in four categories. Taiwan have very balanced supply chain in water treatment and wastewater recommendation. For water production, Taiwan is able to supply its own membranes, from MF, UF to NF membrane, for water purification and deionization. In wastewater treatment and recommendation category, four types of processes are available, namely pressure-driven, temperature-driven, concentration-driven and voltage-driven processes with EDR, CDI, membrane distillation. These low-carbon footprint water filtration and deionization devices provide core technology for industries with water treatment and reclamation operation. Emerging recycling technology could be the key and ultimate solution for companies to reach carbon neutral. We can recover energy, phosphate from sludge, and outweigh technology can recover acid and alkali from wastewater. Taiwan has made substantial progress in smart water management too. We have used big data, IoT, 
AI and machine learning to improve wastewater treatment efficiency and lower operating cost. We can also use smart monitoring to prevent water pipe leaks. As a leading industrial technology research institute, E3 has developed an array of high-efficiency water and wastewater treatment technology. Ideally, industrial wastewater is treated first with anaerobic process to remove the majority of organic pollutants for space and energy saving. This step is important because anaerobic treatment is a major approach to achieve a carbon-neutral wastewater treatment. The process is followed by aerobic process to further remove more organic pollutants. After aerobic treatment, physical chemical advanced processes should be used to remove how to decompose organics or inorganic matters in order to meet the discharge requirement or to be ready for water reclamation. For industrial wastewater treatment and reclamation, we propose two types of processes. The first one is oxidation and biological pretreatment, followed by UFRO. A combination of ozone and bionet is useful for removal of how to decompose organics in order to reduce membrane fouling and produce high quality reclaimed water. The use of EDR to treat our reject substantially increases the water recovery. We can also introduce intelligent control to increase process stability and to save energy and operating cost. This process is particularly useful for high conductivity secondary effluent recommendation. Another alternative process for industrial wastewater treatment uses bionet biological treatment, followed by UF and EDR desalination. Use of EDR as desalination process has the advantage of energy saving and low falling potential. For specific technology, today we only have time to briefly introduce BioNet and EDR. BioNet reactor contains porous compressible carriers, which offer large surface area for the interception of suspended solids and growth of microorganisms. Bionet contain high biomass concentration and the diversity of microbial populations they can remove organic and ammonia with simple operation and maintenance. The most recent implementation is the 300,000 CMD Donggang River raw water pretreatment plant. They offer 50% of Kaohsiung metropolitan area water supply. Bionet is also effective in treating petrochemical factory secondary effluent to meet the discharge center or to be used for water recommendation. Electrodialysis reversal can effectively remove iron from water and wastewater by applying a direct current on the electrode and driving the iron to penetrate iron exchange membranes to create a clear water and a brackish water stream. Polarity of electrodes is reversed periodically to prevent scaling and the fouling of membrane. EDR has been installed over a wide range of applications. The most recent case is the recommendation of 6,000 CMD wastewater discharge from petrochemical industry as a supplementary water source for cooling towers. With zero liquid discharge or even zero waste disposal, we can totally avoid pollution impact on the environment. After advanced biological treatment to remove organics, industrial wastewater is filtered with UFRO to reclaim water. Our reject can be further treated with either EDR, FO, or MD to remove excessive water. r is an emergent technology that can produce acid and caustic from this high conductivity brine solution. Zero liquid discharge is supposed to be a very expensive process, but r 2 not only recover valuable resources from wastewater, it can also substantially reduce energy consumption of ZLD process. Our conclusion for today is climate change will keep testing resilience of Taiwan's economy. We have to overcome water stress and extreme water events 
to maintain stable water supply to our world-leading semiconductor industry, which contributes 15% of our GPD value. Taiwan should and will continue investment on water supply infrastructure, including wastewater reclamation, seawater desalination, pipe leaking management, and the reliable sediment cleaning. As more and more factory conduct wastewater reclamation, the concentrated stream from the wastewater reclamation plant will have adverse impact on the receiving water body. Zero liquid discharge (ZLD) technologies should be further explored as an alternative wastewater management strategy in order to reduce environmental impact. Thank you for your attention. You can find my contact information on the slide and have a nice day. Taiwan's deep topography and geological characteristics present challenges to water management. However, they have created opportunities for Taiwanese companies to develop smart water technologies and solutions. Forming a complete industrial supply chain, Taiwan's water industry is well known for its R&D capability and innovative products for optimizing water infrastructure and resource management. Watch the following video to find out more about the only water-related B2B exhibition in Taiwan. Gathering elite companies from across the industry to showcase water technologies and trends in green energy. The Taiwan International Water Week and Circular Economy Taiwan is a must-go event for professionals and buyers. Due to the ongoing pandemic, the 2020 show relied on video conferencing to connect foreign buyers and domestic companies. Online interaction became the means to demonstrate the strengths of Made in Taiwan products. During September 23rd to 25th, the MOEA's Water Resources Agency hosted a number of forums and symposiums. Through video conferencing, domestic and foreign experts and scholars discussed ways on the cultural, environmental, urban and industrial fronts to promote sustainable use of water resources in the midst of climate change. Over the course of the show, there were also a number of product presentations. In total, thousands of domestic professionals attended these events. We look forward to your return to the Taiwan International Water Week. Given Taiwan's crucial position in the global supply chain, the Taiwanese government has implemented a number of national initiatives to drive industrial innovation and promote sustainable business strategies embedded circular economy concepts and sustainable thinking into the nation's economic activities. The second speaker of this webinar will be Dr. Chong Shi Ling, a research fellow at Chonghua Institution for Economic Research and the deputy director of the Center for Green Economy Taiwan. Dr. Ling will now give an overview of Taiwan's water resource industries and the potential for forming a global partnership in promoting circular solutions. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my presentation today. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Taiwan's status in water control and the pollution uh, prevention for water resources. First of all, I would like to do a little self-introduction. I am an environmental scientist by training, working on all kinds of environmental policy projects on many subjects for more than 20 years. A few years ago, I also served as the Secretary General of Green Trade Project Office under the Ministry of Economic Affairs in Taiwan. About my organization, CIER, it was established in 1981, the leading think tank in Taiwan for economic development research. Uh, currently, we have about 400 employees about my division, it's called Center for Green Economy. It's a relatively young division in CIER, and also a small but interdisciplinary energetic team 
actively working on all kinds of green subjects, such as climate change, recycling, green economy, uh, etc. Uh, today, I would like to talk about Taiwan basically in two aspects. Water pollution status, that is about water quality, and also water resources, uh, that's about water quantity. Now, we have about 23 legislations for water quality control. The first one is Water Pollution Control Act since 1974, and Soil and the Groundwater Pollution Remediation Act since 1990, and the third one is Marine Pollution Control Act since 2000, which is relatively young uh, among these three major acts. More recently, the regular Revisions on these regulations include the effluent standards considering dioxin and more penalties for violating Water Pollution Control Act. Also, water pollution control fees to be collected from households. Okay, this slide is showing the water quality status in two aspects. The first one is river or service water pollution on the left-hand side. And the blue part is showing a non polluted percentage. So you can see the situation is better in the east, but not so good in the north and the south of Taiwan. And the second part is about soil and groundwater pollution on the right hand side. And you can see more polluted sites are located in northern Taiwan, where more old industries are located. Although gradually the polluted sites are recovered. Still, we have about almost 3,000 uh, contaminated sites under control. For the aspect of water resources or water quantity, on average, the annual precipitation is about 2,500 mm, but ranging from 2,100 to almost 3,000 mm from area to area. So it's an uneven distribution of precipitation. Although we have relative abundant rainfall, the precipitation pattern across Taiwan is not very even also from season to season. Uh, for example, uh, in the springtime, Taiwan has a serious drought, which endangered those heavy water consuming industries, especially semiconductor industry, which is regarded as the most important industry in Taiwan. So at that time, the government and the general public was very nervous. Now in summer, we have too much rain from very disastrous events. So the stability of water resources is very concerned, especially under a condition of rapid climate change. Overall speaking, the water available in Taiwan was 20% consumed by domestic uses or the general public, 9% by industry, and 71% by agriculture. In terms of where the water is from, 24% of water is from reservoirs, 56% from river diversion, and 20% from groundwater recharge. So agriculture is consuming all of the water resources while the GDP contribution from agriculture is less than 2%, which is something we have talked about a lot. Regarding water quality and the safety assurance, there are 14 major legislations in Taiwan. The first challenge right now we have about water quality and water quantity is about how to reuse and recycle water more effectively and efficiently. Especially the water reuse and recycling from large areas, such as the diagram shows. Communities, cropplands, industrial parks, urban areas, etc. The second challenge we have, from my point of view, is how we can adapt or implement more smart management systems for water quantity monitoring and the sewage operation to avoid water pollution in large areas. The third challenge we are facing is related to climate change. That is how we can do better flood control, 
and alarming systems to reduce the loss of lives and properties. In August 2009, the landslide from a serious typhoon event buried a whole village in South Taiwan, which is still a bloody lesson for us to remember. Under the difficult situations we have now in Taiwan about water, there are also quite a few remarkable achievements in water industry. Especially since 1974, more environmental regulations have been enacted. So a lot of high-end environmental industry for water quality, water quantity, water safety have been quickly developed. This slide just shows some examples of those good companies who can provide good solutions for recycling and water treatment. You can look at the slide closely and to learn what they are doing and where they can get. To recognize these good companies, my organization, the Center for Green Economy of CIER, hosts Taiwan Circular Economy Awards since the year 2019. Basically, there are four categories under the awards system. Corporate Awards, Product Awards, Innovation Awards and Cross Industry Awards. We first held this event in early 2019 and second time in 2020. Now we are shooting early 2022 to hold this event again for a third time. Taking 2019 event as an example, in total there were 80 entries for the competition in the end, only 11 awards were granted. The sizes of those companies who won the prizes varied a lot, ranging from small and medium-sized enterprises to large state-owned companies. So all kinds of companies are welcome to join this event. After the award ceremony is not finished yet, we showcase them in all possible occasions. So this is not only an event only for business competition, but it's also for education and training in Taiwan's society. Now we are preparing this event for the third time. Please let me know if you are interested to join or to get information about it. Here are some examples of the top winners in 2019. Thai Sugar, a state-owned company who utilizes livestock waste to produce shampoo. And E&E &E Recycling, a long-term recycler in Taiwan, provides good services for e-waste recycling. And Syntex, a textile company, produces high-end clothing from coffee grounds. Tenya technology for silicon reuse in steel making, same for chemical working on good business models for solvent recycling. AUO, the large panel maker, can recycle 100% of their waste water and reuse it for their production again. Hair or right cooperation is not only used biodegradable materials for packaging and bottles, but they also placed a seed in a bottle. So after you used up the shampoo, you can simply put the bottle in your backyard and it will grow into a tree in a few months. So it's called the design of a tree in a bottle. And the production certification has attracted a lot of attention in the market. However, I believe with the very high interconnected global supply chain. Circular economy is not achievable in a single industry or within a country, but we must rely on international partnership. So the first approach I propose is clusters to clusters. It's a potential cooperation model, both in the domestic and the international scales. Especially, we need to come up with good business models on a platform that can provide 
technology exchange, information and marketing, financing, and green certification, etc. And here is an example diagram showing the interconnection among these clusters, financial institutions, manufacturers, and recyclers to come out technology cooperation, financial solutions, and product deployment strategies. So it's not only within the group of manufacturers or financial institutions, it must have dialogue among them. Another prospect is called the International Industrial Ecology, emphasizing the international cooperation in capital, materials, technology supplies, and also the sharing of global market in the end. More importantly, it's focusing on the sharing of global market at a different scales, such as in Asia or the whole world. Groundverse in Taiwan is a good example to illustrate the concept of the international industrial ecology. They are a Danish company with advanced technology providing high efficient water pumps to the global market. But they are also localized in Taiwan for quite a long time. Now they are not just producing their products to the whole world, but also they are working on sustainability projects in other countries such as Kenya and Vietnam. So they are not just making products, they are also doing sustainability. The car maker Nissan Renault in India also got their help to utilize rainfall for their 60% of water use. And more importantly, without any wastewater discharge. That's all about my presentation. And I thank you for your attention and have a good day. In recent years, the Taiwanese government has launched several national programs such as the 5 plus 2 Innovative Industries Initiative for forming the country's circular economy. While circular economy practices continue to be adopted across different sectors and supply chains, these national initiatives have created a thriving circular economy industry in Taiwan. The 2021 Asia Sustainable Supply and Circular Economy Conference and Exhibition is your one-stop procurement platform for meeting the major players and suppliers in the industry. Find out more about Taiwan's only circular economy exhibition in the following video. For more information about the trade shows featured in this webinar, please visit the official websites of the trade shows as shown on the screen. Thank you for tuning in to the Taiwan Business and Trade Show webinar, Water Resources and Circular Economy. Please stay safe during the pandemic. Meanwhile, take advantage of TaiTrust online webinars and trade platforms to stay connected with the industry.